Today is one of the most important days of the church calendar. The church would require us to have Holy Kurbana even if this day falls on Good Friday. Good Friday is one of the other most important days of our church calendar, but this would get precedence and more importance than Good Friday. Because this is the day when the creation received the good news about God's decision to become human and by himself save the people. Earlier God had tried, as Jesus put it in one of his parables, to liberate human beings through various leaders of the community. But those acts of God did not bring out fruit as God wanted it to be. And therefore, finally, God decided that he himself will incarnate and come into the midst of creation for its salvation. And for the incarnation and the salvific work of God through Christ, it was Mary who was chosen by God. And something struck me when I read that passage in Luke's Gospel, where the announcement of the incarnation was delivered to Mary. Mary's way of responding to that call. People usually take things for granted and do not raise any question where particularly it comes from a higher authority. That's what is called the slavery. Now today after the service I had already told the people there in St. Gregorius that I will not have more than two diet side dishes when I eat my meal. There were several of them. I told them, you never learn. Slavery is a sickness. Some people like to be slaves. The long-standing practice of women making too many curries for the remainings and actions will not simply go away, even if said. This announcement came from God. And for a normal person, that person would never raise a question. How can it be? Now, of course, Sakaria earlier raised that question. But Sakaria was not asking a question to know things. Rather, he was asking that question from his own prejudice. He thought a person who has crossed the limits of bearing a child cannot bear a child anymore. That's a prejudice and a preconceived notion on the part of Sakarya. But this one is an analytical question. How can it be when I am an unmarried God. This is what God actually wants us to be in this world. In the beginning, when God had his people in the Garden of Eden, told them, now these are edible fruits, but this one is not so edible. 
and therefore you may not eat of it. And then a commercial, as we see on television every day, this is good for you, came to the people there and told them, if you eat of it, you will become one like God. Now, this is what we every day face. Now, back in Kerala, if you watch uh, Asia on a daily basis, you will buy some uh, you know, powder and mix it with water and give the children so that they can pluck the mango hanging from the mango tree, even though it's very tall. Or you can make your face shining like sun. And of course, then your husband may not be able to look at it. <laughs> In some cases, it's not good for the husband to look. If you use this particular cream, or if you use this particular ornament, jewelry, now everybody will be looking at you. Or this bike, or this car, these are all commercial propaganda which will steal away money from your pocket. To condition your mind so that they can make some money out of you by taking you for a ride. Now this serpent which was supposed to be under the direction and control of humans came to Eve and said, this is very good. This fruit will make you one like God. And usually people ask, no, for eating such a fruit, why God had to punish the people so much? Now my answer would be, she never asked a question. She was not analytical in her approach to the issue. And that was reversed by Mary in her approach. And the message can come from anyone. And this message, we don't know who brought the message. Of course, the Bible says the messenger brought it. The word used about in Greek is angelos, angel. Angel can be translated into English as a messenger. Now sometimes we think of angels as two, having two wings and uh, wearing white cloth, not quite human, not male, not female. No, there are people like that. Uh, if you particularly go to North Indian cities. Does it need to be a supernatural being? It can come from anyone, provided God directs that person. Now we see that in the Old Testament, the prophets, the leaders of the community, going to kings and other people, telling them, now this is the word of God. One of those words to Mary came. Mary's approach to that particular message is an eye-opening approach to all of us. Now, religion, probably the best thing that happened in the whole history. But religion can be the worst thing, the most dangerous thing to happen. Now, on my way to the United States last week, I was in uh, Dubai with my brother and my mother for a couple of days. He runs uh, a small um, company where he wants people as employees and he wants to bring people from various parts of the world. He approaches the immigration department they would not say yes to any candidate that comes from Pakistan, Bangladesh, Egypt, and those Muslim countries. They will have to run 
so many inquisitive attempts to see that this particular person is harmless. Whereas, if you submit a name from India, not many questions are asked to be sanctioned. Because the same religion, but people in UAE, the authorities do not trust people in Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Egypt. They don't know who is trying to infiltrate into the country in the name of religion and create problems. UAE is a very free country. And they don't want any mischiefs happening there. Religion can be the most dangerous thing in this world. Many a time, people do not ask questions. If those common people during the time of Jesus had asked questions before the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the high priest, at least once they would have been proved wrong in interpreting the word of God given in Torah or in the law. They didn't do it because they swallowed everything given by the authorities who claimed to be directly linked to the divine. Now that's what we usually claim. We formulate an equation, A is equal to B, B is equal to C, therefore A is equal to C. Now God is there, who is A, and we are here, who are B, and you people are C, and therefore what God tells us will be what we tell. Many a time people do not ask questions. That's not only in the case of religion. In any situation, in politics, in social life, in interpersonal relationships, we don't explore. Now this is something we could have learned from the Western culture. I had a, 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 a teacher back in, during my um, seminary days. Whatever statement we might make, he would ask, what do you exactly mean by that? No, we didn't expect that question. Because he would simply was supposed to say right or wrong. But he wanted to know what was our idea when we made that statement. How did we put that in perspective? Parents, early parents, would always ask their children, sit down and listen. That will cut off any possibility of asking a question. Now we are many times driven by preconceived notions and would never ask questions. <laughs> We don't really ask under the given circumstance what does it mean to be a husband? What does it mean to be a wife to this particular person? What does it mean to be father to these children who are growing up already in 22nd century? And we coming from probably 18th century. Mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, those who have authority make their statements based on their understanding of things. 
doesn't need to be applicable in my case. Of course, it can become if I ask a question. And that's what Mary did. Mary asked, I'm an unmarried woman. How can this happen in my case? And then God is bound to explain, which he did not do with the case of Sakaria. He came down. You now this has been always his character. Now he came to Abraham and told him, look at Saddam Gomorrah, the people wretched people. I'm going to destroy the place. And then Abraham asked him, how can you destroy those people if there are 50 people there? And God sat down. He went out to count the people. Abraham again asked the question, how can you destroy those people if there are only if there are good 40 people? Okay. So the relationship between human and God is a dialogical relationship. That's a theological statement. A dialogical relationship. Entering into a dialogue and making people understand God's plan and bringing them follow it. On the other hand, humans attempt to understand God's purpose. And most of the time what we do in our worship is come with our own needs, prayers and requests. Put them before God and we want him to execute them. We would never ask him, are there the right choices? Or, at any time, what is in your mind about me? Many a time we will be driven by false ideas that we formulate by seeing certain things around us. I have been preaching in Kerala for the last 15 years on a particular subject. Asking our people, don't send all your children to be a genius. Nobody listened. They will spend lakhs of rupees to make their children engineers, sometimes in the right path, sometimes not so right path, paying so much money. You know what happens now? Engineering colleges are on sale now. Because 60% of the students do not make it any time. 50% of the medical students do not pass out the first time. The wrong notions of the parents. They don't ask how many people are needed 10 years after driven by prejudices. We don't ask questions. We don't sit down and talk about our life. Husband and wife, what do you expect of me? Or this is what I want from you. I don't know how many times you husbands and wives looked at each other in their eyes and talked to each other. Running around working very hard, day and night, trying to make a fortune, and at the end of the day, tired, depressed, and many a time, no communication. On a daily basis in Kerala, 100 divorce petitions are filed on family courts. The government, because of the high inflow of applications, are going to make eight more family courts in Kerala because they don't look at each other and ask. Rather, they are most of the time 
driven by false notions. Wife means I know. Husband means I know. These are my children, my property. I will decide what is best for them. These are my parents. I need to get my demands done through them. These days parents are like ATM machines. You go and punch few digits, you need to get money. People have long, forgotten how to toy, work hard. Now Kerala is the state where you have maximum number of unemployed people. They are not unemployed, 10%. They are quite employed. Only thing they are employed at night. They are employed people. Because they don't want to ask their lives, what am I supposed to be like? Then they don't get answered. If you don't ask, you don't get answer. At the same time, you assume there is an answer. And this is what happened with the leaders of the Jewish community. Now if you read chapter 2 of the prophecy of Jeremiah, you would say with the words of God, the people never inquired of me. Rather, they proclaimed several things. Without asking and knowing, they keep up, kept on giving answers. All false answers came out of their ignorance. They had because they never asked a question. Mary asked and took a dialogical relationship with God and God respected it. And to our lives, to our relationships, to the things that we do, we need to ask, what does it mean to be? What does it mean to be a husband? What does it mean to be a wife? What does it mean to be a parent? What to this particular children? Everyone is created by God unique. There is no one exactly like the other. Cloning may not work anymore. The spirit. Therefore, each one has to be respected, acknowledged, and accepted as they are. If you want to do that, enter into dialogue. Ask and receive. That's the message Mary brings to us.